If you've ever been curious to know what the environment or what the workplace for a field service engineer is like, this video is going to be one for you. The three areas that are going to be primary for a field service engineer are going to be GMP slash clinical research or academia and simply just being on the road. Welcome back to Untitled Label, where we strive for greatness through optimization. I'm John, I'm a field service engineer, and on this channel, I strive to share my life on and off the clock with you. Before we get into today's video, I wanna take a second to say thank you for watching this video, taking time out of your busy day to check out what I have to say. If you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button and the thumbs up at the end of the video if you actually find this information somewhat useful. For those of you that have already subscribed, welcome back, and as always, thank you so much for the support. With the housekeeping out of the way, let's get into it. You ever watch a show or a movie and you see those guys in like a lab and they're wearing like a full bunny suit or they're covered up, you can't really see their face, they're wearing all white? Um, well, just so you guys know, most of the time they're probably going to be in a clean room. As a field service engineer, this is an environment that we actually work in. Being in the biotech industry, oftentimes you'll have equipment in clean rooms or clinical environments which need to take extra precautions in order to prevent any type of germs or any type of unwanted specimens from entering that workspace. Now, oftentimes, a lot of these uh, places, clean rooms that you're going to be working on, the reason why they're like this is because the um, experiments that they're going through using the equipment for Oftentimes those are really heavily regulated. So you have FDA type stuff going on and you wanna make sure that everything's done correct to a T. So extra precaution is necessary. So what does that mean for you as a field service engineer? So oftentimes before you enter those rooms, you're going to have to do clean room preparation. This requires you to wipe down any type of equipment that you're gonna be bringing into the space. Uh, so oftentimes I have a big toolkit that I'll bring in with me to a customer site, I'll have to take out things out of that toolkit that I'll need uh, for my maintenance, repair, whatever I'm doing, and wipe those things down with alcohol or bleach, whatever they have. And with once that's done, I'll have to wait a certain amount of time. And then while that's happening, I also have to uh, change. I have to put on the white um, suit that you guys often see and to make sure that I'm ready and I'm good to go in the clean room. Now, depending on the customer or where you're actually going to be working at, they, there can be levels of uh, clean room entries. So they're called BSLs. Um, so some places are going to be more strict and have more levels that require more cleaning and more gowning per se than others. So keep that in mind as a field service engineer in the biomedical industry. Once you actually get in the clean room, oftentimes you'll probably have an escort with you. Uh, you want to make sure you're being professional. You're making sure you're taking into account where you're at. So you don't want to necessarily like, let's say you're wearing gloves. You don't want to just take your gloves off. Uh, if your gloves rip, you know, make sure you let your escort know, get another pair of gloves. Just be conscious and mindful of where you're at and just take into account that you're in a clean room. And you don't want to expose any kind of contaminants into the space. The next type of work environment is going to be based on academia or research. Uh, a lot of these places are going to be universities for the most part or startup bio, uh, bio companies. Again, I keep bringing up um, bio or biotech. Um, this is the industry that I'm based on. Depending on what type of field service engineer you are, things might be a little bit different. But for the most part, you're going to be going from site to site, customer to customer. Every customer is going to be a little bit different. But for the most part, these are key tips or good information that can help out any field service engineer. Unlike the GMP and clinical environment, the research environment is a lot more lax. Obviously, you're not going to have to wear um, gowning, uh, wear that bunny suit that I previously mentioned. You're probably going to most likely just wear your regular clothes um, and you're just going to go to wherever the instrument is located and start your work. Oftentimes, you still might have an escort that's going to bring you to the location. Um, in my experience, I've noticed that a lot of the research or academia places are going to be in universities, like I previously mentioned, on workbenches. A lot of times, they have a lot of space, a lot of workbenches that the equipment's going to be just sitting on. And then that's where you're going to be 
doing your maintenance or repair, whatever you're going to be doing at the customer site. While I'm on the road, I actually try to document my adventures, what I see, uh, I'm into photography. One of the reasons why I started YouTube was just so I can record what I'm doing, share this information, and share a little bit of my life with you. If you're interested in seeing more of my personal day-to-day, -day, make sure you check me out on Instagram. I'm also starting a new YouTube channel that's more so focused on the hobbies that I enjoy outside of being a field service engineer. So my Instagram is going to be linked below. It's also trapmaster underscore John. And the new YouTube channel that's going to be starting is going to be John Mission. Lastly, but probably one of the most underrated aspects of the, of the work environment is going to be while you're on travel. So this includes while you're at a hotel or at the airport, even on a plane, if you want to add that to the list as well. I try to maximize my time by actually always being proactive. So when in these locations, I try to work on admin. Uh, let's say I finish something for the day. I'm back at the hotel. Um, obviously, that's going to be your home away from home. So you're going to have work to close out, uh, tickets to, I guess, move around, emails to send off. So that's a great place to where you can sit down, focus, and get that stuff done. Uh, early in the morning, let's say before I even get to the airport or I'm at the airport, I'm making sure that I have everything preloaded before getting to a customer site. So this is a perfect example of using my time while I'm waiting for boarding at the airport, um, checking emails, doing whatever I can while I'm just sitting there. Usually I'll have headphones in, music, focus on that, and knock out some of the admin stuff that needs to be done just to save a little bit of time later on. The last place I'll include on this list is going to be your home. Uh, as a field service engineer, I have a home office. In my home office, it's a great place for me to do a lot of work. Uh, for the most part, I use it to do IQOQs and mainly focus on admin. So that includes parts, emails, making sure everything from the day to day is caught up and my planning is well ready for execution. I have it set up to have everything that I need so I can be as productive as possible. If you made it to the end and you found this video helpful, informational, consider subscribing if you haven't yet. Smash that thumbs up button. Share with someone that might be interested in being a field service engineer or is already a field service engineer. With that said, I'll catch you on the next one.